Now, this is an amazing story about dinosaurs and dinosaur footprints in particular, because these footprints are believed to belong to the last dinosaurs to roam the UK. They were discovered close to the White Cliffs of Dover. Yep, a study of the fossils revealed this week that as many as six different types of footprints have been identified. So joining us to talk about this is paleontologist Professor David Martel. Professor David, good morning to you. Um, just explain morning, first ben. of all how you came to be involved in this study. Uh, well, because um, a couple of uh, guys that I know, uh, Steve Frederick and uh, Phil Hadland down in Kent, uh, made this discovery uh, on the beaches uh, just between Folkestone and Dover. And um, they found some rather strange looking uh, structures in the uh, sandstones there and uh, they thought that they might be dinosaur footprints they started to do some work down there and eventually they uncovered not just uh, footprints but some trackways uh, and they asked if I would come along to Folkestone and have a look at them and lo and behold the guys were dead right they'd actually found a whole load of dinosaur footprints well that's not unusual I mean there's lots of places where you can find dinosaur footprints in Britain but that section of coast between uh, Folkestone and Dover, the rocks there are of an age around about 100 million years or so. Uh, and that's the last time at which dinosaurs could walk in Britain. After that time period, Britain was completely flooded. There was pretty well nowhere for dinosaurs to walk. Yeah, so these are the last dinosaurs, as you say, in, in this part of the world. And what I find fascinating about this is they discovered these footprints, I think, about 10 years ago. It's taken a long time to really work out what they are, what they tell us about yeah. what was happening at that time. And tell us about the diversity of dinosaurs that you've then... Yeah, well, the, the, the reason it's taken such a long time to actually get the story out is that when you first find a, a dinosaur footprint, sometimes it takes convincing, it, it, it takes some convincing the public that what you've got is a dinosaur footprint. Very often, there are so many dinosaurs walking around that they plough up the ground, a little bit like imagine cows walking through a field. Where they all go through the gate, it would be difficult to find one cow footprint, wouldn't it? Yeah. They all get churned up. Um, but eventually, they found some really convincing ones, and it was uh, those convincing ones that uh, made them uh, ask me to come down and have a look. And um, these guys had done a great job. They'd mapped them all out, they'd photographed them, they'd drawn around, and they realised that... Uh, there were lots of different types. Uh, it's very, very difficult to match a particular print to a species of dinosaur, but it's very, very easy to match a footprint to a particular group of dinosaurs. And uh, over the times that they'd been looking, they managed to find footprints that matched meat-eating dinosaurs, the theropods, um, the ornithopods, animals like iguanodon, um, and also the sauropods, and um, ankylosaurs, the ones that look like armoured tanks with a big club on the end of the tail. Uh, and amongst all of those footprints, uh, there was more than one type of meat-eating dinosaur. So there was at least, at least four different groups of dinosaurs, and within those groups there were probably different species as well. And that's pretty phenomenal. And they were all wandering around on one particular beach 100 million years ago. Um, and what does this tell us, uh, and what, how useful will these findings be in our overall study of dinosaurs, particularly those that were in Britain? Yeah, I mean, first of all, it, it shows that throughout the, the Mesozoic, when there could have been dinosaurs wandering around Britain, there were, and they were very diverse. Um, there were lots of different types of dinosaurs. These aren't the largest dinosaurs in the world. Um, they're medium-sized dinosaurs, you know, 10 metres, 15 metres, something like that. They're not the, not the big T-Rexes, I'm afraid to say. Uh, but they're certainly good-sized dinosaurs. Uh, and there's a good spread. Some of them were meat-eaters, some of them were herbivores and different types of herbivores. But what really intrigues me is that uh, if you look at the, the type of strata that they've been found in, up until very, very recently, until these dinosaur footprints were, were discovered by uh by steve and phil um most geologists thought that these rocks were laid down in water that was far too deep to have uh, dinosaurs in um but of course once you find dinosaur footprints <laughs> unless they were walking along the bottom of the sea uh, the water has to be very shallow and indeed this particular sandstone is likely to have been a, a, a big beach environment a big long sandy beach it uh, would have been a, a, a pretty long uh, beach. We can trace these strata all the way along the Kent coast and into Sussex. It would have been a fabulous beach. Uh, on the seaward side, presumably the meat-eating dinosaurs were there scavenging on 
dead fish and things that were washed up, while on the landward side, the vegetation that was overhanging the beach uh, would have been browsed by the sauropods, the ankylosaurs, and the uh, and the ornithopod dinosaurs, the ones like Iguanodon. Um, uh -huh. And uh, it would have almost been a dinosaur highway. They would have been walking up and down these beaches, and uh, there might have been a bit of treachery going on as well. It wouldn't surprise me if the uh, meat-eating dinosaurs were having a go at some of the herbivores as well. Um, but what's really intriguing is that once you get into strata in the UK that are a little younger than these rocks at Folkestone, um, they were all deposited in deep water, and there was nowhere for for dinosaurs really to roam. There may have been a few small islands up in Scotland, uh, over in the, the Welsh Massif, um, but they're unlikely to have been large enough islands to have had uh, substantial faunas uh, of the diversity that we found down in Kent. What an amazing discovery, David. Thank you so much. And by the way, I'm loving your Snoopy T-shirt. If we, if <laughs> we had more like time, that, we would do the evolutionary <laughs> journey from dinosaurs to Snoopy, but we'll have to save that for another time. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you Rachel. Thank you. David Martell, who's a professor of paleontology at the University of Portsmouth.